I think for every business, the biggest moat is your customer, is your consumer. We are obsessed with our consumer. In fact, the mothers are always asking us that we want this unjunk, this unjunk. And, you know, in the first year, we just had one product line, which is in the last six months, we have been launching one category a month. In November, we did chocolates. In December, we did chips. In January, we did cereal. In February, we did brownie. In March, we did puff snacks. In April, we did bhujia. And this entire thing is possible because of the love that mothers have shown to us and the customer love that we have. And I think that is your biggest mood. Indians love snacking. We have grown up having a samosas, chaats, mithais and namkeens. Snacks bring back memories of our childhood, festivals and friends. While they do magic on our taste buds, they don't do wonders for our health. Today, on The 1% Project, I'm speaking to Ahana Gautam. She is the CEO and co-founder of Open Secret and an Harvard Business School and IIT Bombay alum. Ahana and Open Secret are on a mission to unjunk the $15 billion Indian snacking industry. Ahana and I talk about how making a difference is a responsibility and not a choice. How moving away from instant gratification helped her find her place in the world. How the brand of the product is its customer and much more. If you have any feedback about this conversation, speaker or topic recommendations, you can drop me a line at pritish at the rate 1%.live. You can also sign up for the 1% Projects newsletter at 1%.live to get the insights from this conversation and every other conversation. We kick this conversation off with Ahana asking her what makes her a unique founder. I would say I don't know about a unique founder. I think every person is unique in its own way. I can tell you how I have, how my journey has evolved and how I'm a different person than I was few years back so I can just share my unique journey and hopefully that should be able to answer your question. As a founder now I would define myself someone who is very very purpose driven and I believe that people like us uh, especially who had the privilege to get the best in class education whether it was a seat at IIT Bombay or a seat at Harvard Business School when we take creating a meaningful difference in the world as a responsibility and not as a choice. So as a founder, every single day, what motivates me and what drives me is the purpose why we are building Open Secret, the mission behind Open Secret. And I think that is something which is extremely unique about our organization. Every person who has joined the organization, I would say, is very purpose driven. And and the other thing I would say, of course, wasn't design like this from the very beginning. I still remember when I was at IIT, it was a lot about pleasure and instant gratification. And then later on, it became happiness was more like building a very strong resume, getting brands on your resume and proving to the world. And it took me a few years to understand my space in the world. And of course, in my couple of years at HBS actually gave me that time to think and understand that as leaders, how can we make a meaningful difference? So it was a journey from, I'd say, from being a very pleasure-driven to now a very purpose-driven person. And a lot of my friends find it very weird when I say this, that my own instant gratification, my happiness has taken a backseat because what gives me true joy um, these days is just the consumer love that we get and what we are building and why we are building it. So yeah, purpose-driven is is going to be the answer. Now that you've identified that instant gratification is not the path that you want to follow, how has it changed your point of view? One thing I would say, Pritish, and I'm sure um, every founder must have shared the same thing, that when you are on this entrepreneurship journey, it's a journey of highs and lows. And when you are on a high, it's pretty obvious to assume that you are a rock star and it's all because of you. And when you are on the low, you start questioning, why are you doing this? I think what has really helped me being driven by purpose that it's been like a very stable journey for me. So even when there is a high, I understand that still day one and there is a long way to go. And there have been the darkest days, especially last year, when uh, I would have been completely lost because of the personal loss. But the purpose gave me the light in the tunnel. And I could see the light um, in the tunnel only because I was very purpose driven. So I do feel that especially when you think about entrepreneurship, people say you're building for a decade and it will be extremely difficult if you are uh, leading with instant gratification. It would be an 
emotional roller coaster you need to have stability and i do feel as a leader uh, you need to give that kind of stability to your team as well you have to stay calm you have to stay true to the north star and and i think that has personally helped me a lot you've been to the top most education institutes in the world iit harvard both how has that formed your thinking because you landed up with the most competitive potentially the most intelligent and hard working people so firstly i would say both the experiences the first one at iit and then um, the second at hbs were very transformational but they were transformational in different ways i think iit was an experience for the first time i was staying away from my family and imagine like a small town girl like coming from bharatpur and then landing in bombay where you had no idea like the language was new the way people dress the way people think was absolutely new i i had zero perspective about life and it was such a fantastic learning experience for me and in totally i became like a very different person a very well rounded person as you mentioned hps i would say was a completely different transformation in a way where i started thinking about my role in the world hps has this mission it says that we want to create leaders who want to build a meaningful difference in the world want to bring this difference in the world and uh, till then and i'll be very honest that it's been like especially in india education has been like a rat race you have to uh, get to a then you have to get another brand then you have to get another brand name on your resume and i think hbs was that place where it gave me a lot of security where it also was a point in my life where i reflected on my own journey and i started thinking about what really matters the life is extremely short we are very privileged um, as you rightly mentioned i don't even know any other girl from bharatpur who would have a chance to sit in a classroom in harvard business school if i still continued with the rat race i was just wasting my seat and i thought it's my responsibility to all the girls out there in bharatpur and many other small towns of this country that i do something about it and i take my own again my own happiness as a back seat and making a bigger purpose which is something beyond me and that kind of uh, motivation and inspiration was was of course something that hbs gave that kind of perspective and the other thing i would say that what hbs also taught me that sometimes when we see leaders who are making a big difference or who are doing a big innovation we see them as aliens that oh my god they're fantastic people i will never be able to do that but when you're sitting in a classroom with similar people and then you say okay my comment is as smart as their comment like you should stop questioning yourself and you should just start doing things it also gave me a lot of confidence that it's all about intent and hard work and if you truly want to do something you will be able to figure out a way and a path so definitely helped me in figuring out what the purpose should be and also giving me the confidence to just go after it and just clear out the noise and the clutter um, on the way you mentioned about the north star and in our previous discussion you had mentioned that mothers are the north star for open secret double click on that when i was thinking about uh, the brand name when i was starting up a lot of people gave like brilliant suggestions which is the wholesome food all those things and i truly wanted to this brand is a dedication to all the mothers it wasn't about us it was about them and that's also the reason why the name open secret because it's an open secret and i'll tell you why mothers are the north star on this journey if i have to ask you this pratish and i'm sure everyone would have a similar answer is what was the most nutritious and the tastiest meal that you always that you admire and that you had in your life i'm guessing the answer would be makhi hath ka khana or someone that your mom has made if you think about meals in india it's they're so spiritual we eat fresh food and they're so it's so healthy it's only where the packaged food where the junk has entered in the house and in a food it's always the mother who knows what is best for us and then food has been very simple right there's a famous quote that the oldest the problem the oldest the solution so we don't want to over complicate the solution which is already exist which is already existing for decades and for generations so we just wanted to take the junk from the packaged food and we just wanted to follow what mothers have been feeding us when it you know think about the meals and that's the reason why mothers truly have been the north star on this journey because there's absolutely no one who knows what is best for you apart from the mother and i think that's the main reason why i always wanted to keep the mother on the pedestal and not the brand and that's the reason that we don't have 
uh, a very special secret to share. What we do is very simple. Uh, we go to the mother. We ask her, what do you want us to unjunk? And how do you want us to unjunk? So she said, okay, I want to unjunk cookies. And then we unjunked it. And how? She said, I don't like the maida. I like the nuts. So we removed the maida and we added 40 to 50% nuts. We launched Open Secret a little over two years. And since then, we have expanded into 10 categories. And I will take zero credit of the innovation. The mothers are the chief product officers. They tell us what to unjunk and how to unjunk. And this is truly, I think, um, has been the guiding principle in how we operated Open Secret. I can't agree more with your Maa Hat Ka Khana. How do you think about business moves? Because there are a number of healthy snacking D2C brands in the market. So how do you build moots? I think for every business, the biggest moat is your customer, is your consumer. We are obsessed with our consumer. In fact, the mothers are always asking us that we want this unjunk, this unjunk. And, you know, in the first year, we just had one product, which is in the last six months, we have been launching one category a month. In November, we did chocolates. In December, we did chips. In January, we did cereal. In February, we did brownie. In March, we did puff snacks. In April, we did bhujia. And this entire thing is possible because of the love that mothers have shown to us and the customer love that we have. And I think that is your biggest mode. And what we have seen, just to give you some data points as well, that your AOV used to be, let's say, X. With the new launches, the AOV has doubled. It has become 2X. The reason is when people who were trusting us with just cookies are now coming and buying more and more categories from us. Uh, similarly, more than 60% of the consumers who are coming to our website, they're buying two to three categories. That's the whole idea that when people initially used to think of us as a cookie brand, and now they think of us as unjunk snacking brand, that's the kind of destination we want to become. That as you think about unjunk snacking, you think about open secret. And you come to a platform, you fill your basket, whether it's your chips or your nuts or your cookies or your cereal or your brownie or your puff snacks, everything. You can fill your cart and then you can check out. And I think that customer love, that trust is, is going to be the biggest mode. And, and I think taking a step back also, British, that when I started open secret, one thing which was very clear to me that India was a very supply constrained market. What do I mean by that? If I have to ask you this question, can you tell me an unjunk snacking brand for families? There was no answer. And snacking is a $15 billion category. And that was the main reason it was so bizarre to me that such a huge category, the struggle that my mother went through is the same struggle that my sister in law is going through. And there has been this tension which has been existing that what mothers want their families to eat and what families want to eat were mutually exclusive and that's what we are bridging the gap and the way we think about building a brand we don't want to build a niche brand or cater to the needs of Bombay, Delhi and Bangalore mothers. I want to build a brand which is true for a Bombay mother as well as a mother who's in Bharatpur where I grew up and that is the reason why following the customer catering the deep categories. We're not going after the niche trends. And there's nothing wrong with keto and vegan and all of those things. But I truly believe that India is such a supply-constrained market and we want to take unjunking to every household of this country. And we have a very different mission and we are going after the deepest categories where the junk exists. How have you been able to actually penetrate the tier 2 and tier 3 cities? First, I would say that because there was an unmet need. If you talk to a mother, she has always been looking for something which is tasty as well as nutritious. And a mother across the country behaves the same way. If you talk to a mother in Bombay or you talk to a mother in Bharat, what we have been focusing on, as I said, is to go after a highly penetrated category. And that's the reason why we started with cookies. Because cookies is a category which is consumed across the country. And similarly, like chips. And the way we unjunk, it's also very mother first. Removing maida and then adding nuts or whether it's not fried, but it's baked. It's something which resonates with every family of this country. I think that has really helped us in keeping the messaging true to the customer, what they're looking for in a supply constrained market and just giving them what they have been asking for. That's number one. And it, like, it, it seems pretty obvious, but imagine the kind of innovation that the country like India has done in technology. We have 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. But unfortunately, it was still a third world country when it comes to packaged food. So it was truly a very supply constrained situation where we are just filling 
and giving customers what they're asking for. And I won't even say that we're trying to be Steve Jobs and telling consumers you don't know and let us tell you what you need. No, mothers know what they're looking for and we're giving them what they're asking. As simple as that. That is number one. And also I would say that making these products very affordable as well. We started unjunking with nuts. Nuts, of course, is a premium ingredient, but we want to make our products more and more accessible. So now we have also started using ingredients which are very good, like for example, juar, but not as expensive as nuts. And recently we launched those puff snacks, which is also 20 rupees. So our goal is at every price point, at every corner of this country, we will have an unjunk snack for you. So thinking about the price point, thinking about the value proposition, thinking about your food habits. We are not here to change your food habits. We are here to give you a better version of what you like to eat. That's definitely there. And I think the second thing, Pratish, is of course the the digital. The post-geo world has enabled a lot of brands to take your brand story and brand narrative to a lot many households. Just to give you an example, because of online, like we started and then COVID happened. So we had to be very online first. But what online gave us is a pan-India distribution. That's the beauty of online, right? You don't have to go one city in the second city. You just you can just service the entire country. And when the messaging was resonating with mothers and they were able to access and they were able to find because of the online medium, we were getting orders from like Andaman and Mathura and other parts of the parts of the country as well. It's more about serving the customer, what they're asking for using the online media so that you can access the different corners of the country. And then third, I would say the most important thing is having a very true, authentic purpose and story. I just shared our purpose and authentic story on, on like LinkedIn and, and Twitter. It got more than 2 million views just because people resonated with it. That's what we are just trying to do. It's basically, again, just following your customer. Can you unpack the customer discovery of the product? So I'm very intrigued. How does anybody find Open Secret? I, I, unless and until they're exposed to the product, sure. They may just type it and get onto your website or they may find it on Amazon. But if they don't, how do they stumble upon Open Secret? I think that's an excellent question. And I would say, Pritish, in our category, the more visible you are, the better the brand equity. And that's why we don't call ourselves a D2C brand. Again, I think I, I find it pretty egoistic. It's about us. We are a very consumer-first brand and we are a very omni-channel brand. Customers have different journeys and every channel has a very strategic role to play. Of course, we are uh, a D2C brand as well that we have. We are selling directly from a website and their customers can come and explore the entire assortment. We are also present in offline when you want to. And it's a very good trial. And our offline is present across the country, not only just um, in the top cities. We are in, we're at 2,000 stores and we are hoping to go into 5,000 stores in a couple of months. So that's where the discovery is also happening. And then, of course, you want to surround the family wherever they are going. I just recently saw a post on LinkedIn where someone discovered a brand on when they were watching a movie at Inox. And then uh, they had just tried the cookies and they tried the entire portfolio of product, chips, brownie, and they just made a video on YouTube said how much they love Open Secret. So again, a very different avenue where you are hanging out with your friend and discovering the brand. And of course, then there's a quick commerce where you want something 10 minutes and then you see open secret. So the whole idea is that being an omnichannel brand and being part of different customer journeys and letting them explore the brand. So let's talk about the big FMCG companies. Why have they not tapped into this? For them, they have the distribution, they have the brand name, they probably have everything that you're building for. So why have they not got into this space? I think it's a, classic case of innovators dilemma what we first need to understand is what is their strength what are they good at they are good at growing a scaled up business let's take an example of a hypothetical company they have a brand which is 5000 crore in the biscuit and the cookies category imagine we are the general manager of that company and then there is a small idea which can become like 100 crores in a couple of years but you're already sitting with a brand which is 5,000 crore. You have certain resources. Where will you allocate those resources? If you and I were in their shoes, we would make the same decision that we will keep on using the cash cow, which is a 5,000 crore brand. It's very difficult for a scale-up business to disrupt themselves and focus on unjunking when they've been doing junk and they have been running the business like that. And, and I think that's the reason why you will see, especially if I can give an example of US, a lot of big FMCG companies, whether it's General Mills, whether it's Pepsi, 
they have a venture capital arm and the reason is because they understand what are their strengths their strengths are in scaling up the scaled up businesses their strength is not the zero to one journey even the kind of talent that they acquire and they have been trained in that manner and that's the reason they're thinking of the way we can be part of these trends is investing early on in startup which are doing good work because again it's very difficult to balance the small business versus the big business and give resources and the zero to one journey is not that easy you have to give your 100% you have to give all your resources and you have to hustle and you have to have a high agility the culture the dna is very different so big companies have realized that they, their dna is not designed for this zero to one journey and and they have figured out a different way to collaborate with the startups and this is a more like a us model but we have started seeing some of this in in india as well you were in the us through education and you worked in the us as well and that is why probably you also observed the healthy snacking section but at the same time the obesity of the us market or the obesity rate in the us is still pretty significant yeah so how do you see to really make the indians believe to give up their charts and samosas brilliant question i would first say that that's the reason why if you really want to make people eat healthy make it tasty that's number 1 and number 2 it's extremely difficult to change food habits and actually i don't even believe that and as with open secret we want to do that people love to eat their chips people love to eat their namkeen gujiya right what we believe is and junking it that you love to eat what you love to eat let us just remove the junk in kitchen and let's just give you something nutritious something better and that's our philosophy and i truly believe pritish that's just something which personally and even little bit about my journey i was a really overweight kid i was 3x my size and um, now i am a very i think i would say a health for health conscious person and it's all about balance it's all about making that one person improvement every single day so it's not about that i'm not going to eat this and i'm not going to touch it like this complete uh, elimination because that's not sustainable what is sustainable is you love eating something you keep on eating it portion control and then a better version of that and this is something which is a philosophy even if you think about a cookies if people say that why are you cookies individually packed because we want you to have like one cookie at a time and we put a lot of attention into portion size like you know what should be the right size what should be the right serving size and and changing food habits is extremely difficult whether it's us or whether it's india it's pretty much the same thing so that's the reason why we are focusing on unjunking your habits and not changing your habits do you have an example of a healthy snacking brand you appreciate and what is their moot i would say a brand again because i spend a lot of time in us it is a brand uh, called annies and i i got a opportunity to work on that brand as well and what i absolutely love about that brand couple of things first the authentic storytelling that it was driven by a founder and she really wanted to create products which were natural and organic and then she ensured that whatever product extension that they did whether it was and they expanded into multiple categories but they stood true to the purpose and and i've realized that when someone trust you and that's why she started with mac and cheese and she did cookies and she did multiple other categories as well and people followed followed the brand and they started trying other categories as well and i think that's something which i have realized that the most important thing is is to be very purpose driven and is to be uh, very authentic as well and the other thing which i really like about annies is not just about when you think about doing good it's not about making good products but also how are you making a difference a positive difference in the society because i do believe that as a brand you also have a social responsibility and i'll give you like an this is off topic but i'll give you an example when i was like one of the cases which we were doing at hps and this was a case on and then we were debating whether it's ethical to sell a high sugar soda in fact i was a one and i raised my hand and i said there is absolutely no information asymmetry a consumer can see how much sugar is there in the scan so it's the consumer's responsibility to take a informed decision and then there was this girl called elizabeth and she raised her hand and she said but what about the social responsibility of the company i cannot forget that statement 
I just cannot. And I think that has been a turning point of how I think about the role of an organization in a society. They also are very passionate about working towards climate change. And I think I've realized, I've seen this with Annie, that when you are a very purpose and mission-driven organization, the kind of talent that you acquire, they're so passionate. The energy is absolutely different. I think that's the kind of culture we also want to replicate and create an open secret. Before we close, I have two questions. You talked about talent. You're a young company. You are hiring pretty aggressively. You're growing. How do you assess talent? First, I have to say, Pitish, that I feel so privileged to be leading an organization which has just so powerful and so talented folks. I, I do, and I do mean it that it, I'm very privileged. Three out of four C-level leadership. Firstly, it's women. And then they're all like HBS and IIT. And I'm in no way saying that it's a, it's a mandatory thing. But I'm just saying that if people who have multiple options out there because you can imagine an HBS IIT grad would have plethora of options and they're picking up this opportunity. A, because they believe in the mission and they believe the kind of impact that we're trying to create, of course, financially for our um, shareholders, of course, for the families of this country and of course, the way we are building it by bringing more and more women onto this journey, impact on the society as a whole. So when I'm thinking about talent, A, of course, they have to be the best in what they do. I think that goes without saying. It's the game of execution. And I really want Open Secret to become the talent density so that people want to work, come and work not only for the mission, but also for the kind of people that we have. And I truly believe that A-class A people hire A-plus team under them. So that's number one. And number two, again, going back to people who are very passionate about the why behind Open Secret. Because as I said, and I truly believe that when you are driven by something which is much bigger than you, you give your 200%. Not only on days where you feel you are on cloud nine, but also when you feel that you are in a big hole. And I do feel that whether it's the culture, whether it's the purpose, we are we're trying to build and bring in people who completely resonate with that. How is Open Secret creating the most significant impact? Is it through your culture or is it through your product? I don't think it could be like separate. It has to be together. If we don't have the kind of culture, which is the consumer first culture, keeping the mother on the pedestal, going out of our way just to listen to the consumer, I don't think we will be able to create uh, the kind of products we are creating. Uh, the other thing I would say, like imagine six big launches cannot happen if we don't have a culture which pushes you to be a better version of yourself. Learning is something which is very core value of, of at Open Secret. And we grew 10x in the last 12 months. And every single day, I'm asking myself, am I becoming a better CEO? Because in three months, we're growing so fast that we're becoming a completely different company. So learning is such a critical part of who we are. And only because of that learning, where we're trying to be best and we're trying to be better, it's reflected in the kind of products that we are launching. And I do feel that culture is that thread which helps companies scale. So without that thread, the products will not exist. And without that, without those products, of course, there won't be any organization to have a culture. It's interlinked completely. Brilliant. Ahana, that's a great place to close this conversation. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for, uh, for having me and thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to talk about uh, what I love the most, building open secrets.